Hey there, I'm Adam McRae, also known as Adam Logic. I created a tool called Rails Auto Scale, and I run a newsletter called Mastering Heroku. Um, a few weeks ago, I gave a talk at the Columbus Ruby Brigade called Four Ways to Scale on Heroku. I recorded it, um, and the recording did not turn out very well. So, re recording it here as a screencast so I can share it with you all. And I hope that you enjoy it. The concept of uh, the four ways to scale is it's really a mental model that I've been using to, um, to run apps efficiently and economically, regardless of size. It doesn't really matter if you've got a, a small app or a large app. These concepts are going to apply in different ways. Um, and really, my goal is uh, to, to run my apps so that I can sleep well at night so that I can spend more time on my product and less time on DevOps. And I think whether you're a beginner to Heroku or whether you've been using Heroku for a while, I think these concepts and this mental model can help you uh, scale your app. We're gonna start with horizontal scaling, which is you know, the simplest, uh, most basic way to scale an app. It just means throw more servers at it. Um, Heroku, of course, calls them dynos, and um, that's just their term for servers or containers, but whatever you want to call it, Heroku makes it super easy to scale horizontally, um, adding more dynos using a slider really couldn't be easier. But what exactly um, does adding more dynos do to help your app? It helps to visualize your requests coming into Heroku's router. Heroku's router takes those requests and sends them to your app dynos. And if you have one app dyno running um, and you get a lot of requests concurrently, uh, obviously, um, if your app isn't fast enough to respond to them all immediately, those requests are going to queue up. They're going to wait until your app is available to process it. And if you add more dynos, these requests can be spread across your dynos. It means you can handle more concurrent requests and respond faster. So the question then is, of course, how do you know when you need more dynos? And the answer is to look at your request queuing. What this is, uh, is a screenshot of a tool I use called Scout. Um, it's very similar to another popular tool called New Relic. Um, these are just application performance monitoring tools. Um, I really like uh, Scout, and this is actually a screenshot of Rails Autoscale running on Scout. Uh, and you can see here that I have some spikes of request queuing. And this is an indication of um, my app being at capacity, not being able to handle all the requests coming at it. In theory, um, you can just increase dynos until, until your request queuing gets under control. But I would strongly advise that whenever you're horizontal, horizontally scaling, that you automate the process. Manual scaling will work in the short term, but your app's traffic fluctuates. Um, the performance of your app is gonna fluctuate. Too many things change over time um, for it to make sense to set uh, a number of dynos and leave it there. It really makes sense to let software automate that for you. And Heroku has their own auto scaling that is free. Uh, it's only available on their higher tier of dynos. Um, and one thing to keep in mind with Heroku's auto scaling is that it, it, it auto scales based on response time of your app, um, which can be problematic if you have some of your web endpoints that are slower than others. Um, and that's actually why I built Rails Auto Scale, which is an auto scaling tool, obviously specifically for Ruby on Rails apps. Um, and it actually scales based on that request queuing time that we were looking at in Scout just a minute ago. But whichever you use, there's other tools available as well. Whatever you use, definitely if you're using more than one dyno, you should be auto scaling it. So let's recap horizontal scaling. Um, it's by far the easiest to understand and implement. When do you want to do it? 
um, if you're seeing increased request queuing, that means you should think about scaling horizontally. And if you're if you're at the point where you need more than one dyno, definitely automate it. Next up is vertical scaling. Um, this is just the idea of using bigger servers, or in Heroku's case, bigger dynos. Heroku has four different sizes of dynos that obviously vary in price um, and CPU and memory characteristics. And to get an idea of why you might want a bigger dyno versus more dynos, let's revisit this visualization where we have requests coming in and being distributed amongst three dynos. Now, Heroku's router, I like to think of as Funnelball. Funnelball is a playground toy where you throw a ball in it and the ball just rolls out randomly one of the, uh, one of the tubes underneath. And this is exactly how Heroku's router works. It's completely random. Heroku's router doesn't know anything about your dynos, who's busy, who's available. It's just going to randomly send those requests to one of your dynos, which means inevitably, sometimes your dynos, one dyno is going to get an unfair share of these requests. Might get more requests, might get more requests to the slower endpoints of your app. Um, and that means requests are going to back up. They're going to start queuing on that dyno unless you have multiple web processes running within that dyno giving you concurrency within each individual dyno. And that's really important. Um, and it's super easy if you're, if you're using a, a Rails server like Puma. Puma comes ready to go for multiple web workers, as they call them, out of the box. The thing you need to keep in mind, though, is that more processes means more memory. And Heroku's dynos can be pretty memory constrained. Um, the base level dyno only has 512 megs of memory. And for a lot of Rails apps, that's only going to, um, only one web process is going to fit in 512 megs, maybe two. Um, but for most Rails apps, if you want to have more than one web process, you're probably going to need, need to move up to a 2x dyno or one of the higher tier performance dynos. I would recommend aiming for at least three web, three web processes um, to avoid being you know, stung by, by the random routing. Now that's just web dynos though. Um, it's worth taking a look at worker dynos as well. So worker dynos, instead of having a router that pushes requests to these dynos, worker dynos work on a pull model. They're pulling jobs from some um, shared uh, job queue data store. So they don't have the same uh, constraint of, the, of Heroku's random routing. Um, so you might wonder, okay, so do you ever need to use vertically scale a worker dyno? Um, in this case, it really just depends on the type of work the worker dyno is doing. If you have background, uh, background jobs that are, you know, selecting tens of thousands of records from your database and instantiating active record module models and building CSVs. Um, chances are you're going to have some jobs that require more memory than Heroku's base level dyno can support. So in that case, you really, it's really just kind of dependent on the type of work that your worker dynos are doing for if you need to vertically scale them. So to recap vertical scaling, um, why you would want to do it, it's going to give you um, more consistency with concurrency because it gives you concurrency within a dyno. So it handles that random routing issue. Um, when do you want to do it? Well, if, you, if you're not running three web processes, probably a good idea to vertically scale so you can increase your web processes. Um, if you're running at least three web processes, you're probably good. Um, as for worker dynos, if you have resource hungry jobs, you might need to scale up to a larger dyno size. And just something to be aware of is that it can get expensive. Um, the bigger dynos um, are more expensive, especially when you get into the performance level dynos. So horizontal and vertical, that's the bread and butter of Heroku, um, choosing different dyno sizes and dialing up and down the slider. Um, the next thing I wanna talk about is um, scaling with process types. 
Now, process types are what you define in your proc file. The proc file is what Heroku uses to start your app. Heroku is going to see this and it's going to know, okay, for web dynos, I run this command. For worker dynos, I run this command. And what we're looking at is probably the most basic proc file for a Rails app, just um, a web process and a worker process. And then within Heroku, you would tell, you would uh, choose, you know, the size for your web dyno and how many web dynos you want to run. And likewise for your worker dynos. But uh, sometimes you need a little bit more flexibility, um, particularly with worker dynos. If we revisit our worker dynos pulling from some job queues, um, you might run into a, an issue, a situation where you really want it to look more like this, where you have some background jobs that are lightweight but high volume and you want to be able to scale that horizontally, but you have some other background jobs that are very resource intensive, maybe they don't run as often, you want to scale that vertically because you need the, um, the additional memory. And if you only have one worker process type, you really can't do that. You have to choose one dyno type for all of your worker processes. And this is when it might make sense to add another process type for additional workers and um, use your proc file to tell each process type to, to use a different uh, queue. In this case, I'm using Sidekick and the, uh, the worker and the, and the worker memory hog are pulling from different Sidekick queues. And then that way they can be scaled independently um, and configured independently uh, as well. So recapping process types real quick, why would you wanna do it? Um, to get some granular control over, uh, over jobs processing different queues, um, jobs with different performance characteristics and different scaling needs. Um, the way you do it is you just define these process types in your proc file, and then within Heroku, um, you tell it what size and quantity of dynos to write for that new process type. And yeah, you wanna do this when you've got performance characteristics varying significantly between jobs and you're finding it difficult to, um, to have one worker process type. Um, but that's just workers. Um, how about when you have um, different web endpoints with vastly different characteristics? For example, you might have um, an API portion of your web app or an admin portion of your web app that make that you really want to scale that independently of your main app. That's when um, it might make sense to to scale using multiple app instances. And here's what that kind of looks like. You've got a main uh, this production main app up top that has um, web dynos handling handling requests to your your main app, and it's also got worker dynos running maybe multiple worker process types, whatever you defined in your proc file. Um, but you wanna direct API traffic and admin traffic um, to different apps so you can scale those independently. Um, maybe, you, maybe you have different requirements in terms of response time or, or whatever the, the case may be. It might make sense to divert these subdomains to completely separate apps, but powered by the same code base. Now these, in this example, we've got you know, one proc file um, because these apps are all powered by the same code base, they're all using the same proc file, but we only want the main app to run the worker dynos. And that's why the worker dynos are kind of grayed out in those secondary apps. Now the way you actually would set something like this up is using Heroku pipelines. Heroku pipelines are fantastic. Um, I could probably do a whole other screencast on them. Uh, but Heroku pipelines give you the, the, the convenience of promoting um, from one environment to another uh, for a single code base. So typically you might have review apps built for pull requests as things are being developed, and then everything goes into a staging app. And then when you're ready to go to production, you just promote that staging app to production. And um, most apps are just going to have a single production app, but you might want multiple production apps um, if you're doing something like this where you want to direct subdomain traffic to different apps. And promoting your staging pipeline to production um, will keep all those in sync. Um, 
So what could be a really complex deployment situation is actually made really simple by Heroku pipelines. So to recap, scaling via multiple app instances, why would you want to do it? You can get independent scaling and isolated performance for different subdomains in your app. The way you're going to do it is just create multiple production apps um, and deploy them via Heroku pipelines. And when do you want to do it? Well, really only if you have these different sections of your app with you know really discrete performance characteristics. Um, because this is going to be the most complexity of any of these approaches. Certainly don't want to start out with this, but it's good to know that it's available. Let's kind of put this all together, um, you know, to talk about just like a basic approach to, to all this. Uh, as with most things, start small, start simple. One web dyno, one worker dyno. Um, start with that and see where you're at, especially for a new app. Try to make sure you're running multiple web processes per dyno. Um, you might need to scale vertically for this if you don't have enough memory to run multiple web processes per dyno. I typically aim for at least three web processes per dyno. Um, you're going to want to keep an eye on your memory as you do this using Heroku's metrics UI. Um, that'll make it clear if you are using more memory than your current dyno size allows. Keep an eye on your request queuing using a tool like Scout or New Relic. This is going to tell you if your app is at capacity um, and you need to scale horizontally with more dynos. If you're going to need more than one dyno, if you're going to scale horizontally, um, definitely automate that. If you find that you um, have background jobs uh, with vastly different performance characteristics and you're limited having a, a single worker process type, uh, split those job queues and create their own process types and that'll work well for you. And finally, if you have different sections of your app, different subdomains um, that you wanna be able to scale and configure independently, um, it's fine to create multiple production apps powered by a single code base. Heroku supports that really well. So this is a mental model um, that's been helping me a lot lately. Uh, I hope this helps you. Um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, um, uh, check out Mastering Heroku. It's a newsletter that I send out about once every couple of weeks um, with things that I've been thinking about related to Heroku and scaling. Um, and if you run a Rails app, please check out Rails Autoscale as well. Thanks for watching.